Photoshop is magic and here's the trick. If you take a soft round brush and then change the blend mode to difference and now when you paint over it, this just looks like a simple brush stroke. But what if you paint over it one more time? Now this is something interesting. What is happening right here is that it's painting the difference between the color that you're painting on and the color that you're painting with, that's all. And if you continue painting like this, it creates such a wonderful pattern. Now you must be wondering what to do with it Unmesh. We'll get to that later. But for right now, the more you paint, the denser it gets. And you can also try it with different colors and different brushes. Now let's do something interesting. Let's create a marble effect with this. So let's paint it all with white again. We were already painting with white on white. So the difference between white and white is black. So as we paint it with white over white, of course, it's going to paint in black. Anyway, so now instead of the regular brush, what if we try something artistic? So inside of the dry media brushes, let's try this one, Kyle's drawing box. And now we're just going to paint straight lines. You can paint in circles, straight lines, random. That's up to you. Just experiment, play with it, have fun. So we're just going to draw something like this. Make sure you change the blend mode back to difference. And once you're done with it, don't forget to change it back to normal. All right. And as you do that, this looks like fun. Let's make the brush a little larger. And the more you paint, the more interesting these patterns get. And if you paint enough, it's going to become a marble effect. This is already so fun to do. But what if we could create a pattern out of this and have some incredible practical applications as well? So for it, let's go to File, New. And this time we're going to create a higher resolution document. Let's go to Art and Illustration. 2000 by 2000 pixels is fine. And let's name this Marble Pattern because that's what we are going to create. Let's click on create and then change the view to pattern preview. If you're using the later versions of Photoshop, this would be available for you. Let's go to view and turn on pattern preview. Hit OK. So now whatever you paint, it's going to real time show you that if we turn it into a pattern, how are the results going to look like? So if you paint from the top right here and if you continue, it will automatically paint right here to maintain the continuosity continuity? Maybe that's the word. Anyway, let's start from scratch. Let's take a bigger brush and start painting just like this. It creates incredible pattern. Trust me on that one. The more you paint, the better it's going to get. If we didn't open up the pattern preview, it probably would create some hard edges. For example, right here, if we turn it into a pattern or give it a pattern preview by going to view, pattern preview, hit OK. Have a look, you can see these hard edges right here. But if we start with pattern preview, none of that will happen. By the way, if you already knew all of this trick, congratulations, but this is not it. There's so many more to come. Now, one more trick is as you're painting the pattern, use pen pressure. So if you press the pen harder, the dynamic between the whites and the blacks would be higher, meaning the contrast between the whites and the blacks would be much higher. And we might not want something like that. So you might want to decrease the opacity or the flow if you're not using a graphic tablet. But if you're using a graphic tablet, you can just decrease the pressure in your pen. So the brush that we have chosen, Kyle's drawing box, is pressure sensitive. So the harder we press, the more the intensity would be. And the softer we press, the lighter the intensity there would be. So if we press softly, this would be it. And this creates less contrast. And that creates a better effect. Now look at how natural this result is. This just looks incredible. Look at it. In less than one minute, we have created such an interesting result. Now you can scour through the entire pattern. And if there's anything that looks odd or stands out, if there's anything that looks repeating too much, you can paint over it and correct that. That's it. Now there is another texture which I took a little more time to do. I used the same brush and this is what I absolutely love. Now how do we turn it into a pattern? Select all of it by pressing Ctrl or Command A. You have selected all that there is in the canvas. Now everything that's outside the canvas, it is just a preview. So you can turn it off if you wish by going to Filter, Pattern Preview, just turn that off. Select all of it and then go to Edit and Define Pattern. That's all. You can name this Marble Texture, Pixim Perfect. By the way, you can download it. Check the link in the description to download this pattern. Hit OK. And now let's learn how to use it in practical scenarios. So let's say in this case, you want to add some texture to the background wall to make the subject stand out. By the way, there's one more reason why we are doing this. Have a look at this. So this is the original image and I removed the cycle. And after I removed it, there were some weird things happening here, no matter how much patch tool or content aware I used. So adding a texture or adding some different patterns conveniently hides that. Work smart in Photoshop. So all you need to do now is to go to patterns, click on the adjustment layer icon and then go to pattern, pattern fill. And from here, we're going to choose the marble texture that we just created. 
there we go and now you can control the scaling from right here that's the better thing so you can make it smaller larger of course don't make it too small let's keep it at about 68 percent how do you feel about that by the way we can change this later and here is the great part as long as the pattern fill dialog box is open you can actually move it have a look at it and <laughs> it is seamless now once you're happy with the position just hit okay now turn this off click the subject layer click on the subject layer and then with the quick selection tool the object selection tool or the magic wand tool click on select subject at the top it does a pretty good amazing selection of the subject you can also manually do it but not required in this case turn this on and select the mask of the pattern fill layer with black as the foreground color press alt backspace or option delete controller command d and there you have it now it might look weird because there's no shadow of course to add shadow we're going to change the blend mode to multiply because whenever we are printing something on a white paper we don't print the white color right we just leave that area out so change the blend mode to one of the blend modes of the darken group multiply creates the smoothest gradients so let's go ahead and choose multiply this is fantastic of course we would decrease the opacity about 90% is fine. Also, if you want some more oomph to it, you can double click on the right hand side of the layer and remove it slightly from the bright areas by taking the slider of the underlying layer from right to left. Now, of course, this is harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart to make the transition between the area that is hidden and the area that is showing smoother. All right. So let's take it further, something like this. All right. Now that goes nicely. <laughs> and there you have it. There are so many more secret and mind-boggling applications that I would love to cover in future videos. If you want to learn it, let me know in the comments. Now you might say, Mish, this is all cool, painting with brush and black and white. But what about other colors or what about other tools? Let's take a look at this. So instead of the brush, what if we choose the gradient tool? The gradient tool also has the blend mode option right here. And in the blend mode, if we choose difference, we can do some magic with it as well. So let's draw in a gradient, black to white another gradient another gradient look what we are creating now this is not as interesting what if we do it with colors so there are so many more gradients that you can try so let's go to blues purples so let's go with this one now if you go with this and you draw there are so many more colors to choose from let's start from scratch because we started with black and white and it has some effects now if you do something like this again if you continue it just keeps on creating some wonderful effects for you now there's a fantastic use for it We'll cover it right now, but before it, see how many varieties of colors that you can use together. So along with this, over this, you can choose a different gradient and just draw gradients differently. And on top of that, you can choose a different gradient and keep on continuing this magic. Now, the application of this technique is only limited by your imagination. So I always encourage you to just keep experimenting, have fun with Photoshop. Right now, you can also create some fantastic light leaks with it. Take a look at this image. By the way, this was edited with Luminar Neo. We recently made a video about it. You can check it out right here. You can also add it as a plugin in Photoshop and I applied it on a smart object. That is possible. So here's the before, here's the after. Anyway, on top of that we're going to create a brand new layer and let's name this light leak now let's choose a nice gradient of your choice i'm going to go with this one and then make sure the blend mode right here is difference and the blend mode right here is screen because screen is the blend mode we use for light leaks you might ask why screen because we are adding light leaks and light makes things brighter and screen is the blend mode which makes things brighter so change the blend mode to screen already and then start dragging in these gradients and already have a look how fantastic is that on top of it if we do something like this now have a look now have a look this just keeps on creating some fantastic effects right here we can stop take a look at this and that's how you can use the difference blend mode with the brush tool and the gradient tool to create some incredible effects and by the way if you consider this lesson as a lesson and you want to take an assignment here's one for you find some different interesting uses for these techniques and if you can find some applications let me know in the comments and let other people know in the comments so that we can help each other let us do a quick little recap again this is not rocket science so all you do is change the blend mode of the brush to difference and now when you paint it's going to paint the difference between the color that you're painting on and the color that you're painting with so right now i'm painting with white and the difference between white and white is black so that is why when i paint it's going to be black i paint again it's going to paint in that difference and if you continue to do it 
definitely it's going to create a pattern for you. You can use it with different brushes, different colors, different tools like the gradient tool and then continue this magic with you. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?